you. Finally awake. I can't believe it's finally live. After countless trials and videos about it, we're finally here. We can officially use our PlayStation VR 2 with our PC to play our favorite Steam VR games. And even more, even games that were once available on the first PS VR but left behind. Hey there here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. This is the PS VR 2 running on PC directly. So is it any good? How does it work? Well, let's discover it together in this video. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. So from August 6th, if you're watching the video of the first day of release, thanks for that, will be yesterday, the PlayStation VR 2 app was finally made available on Steam directly. And while the installation of the app was fairly easy and straightforward, there are actually some things that you need to know about it before getting into it, because yeah, it's not as easy as it seems. So in this video, I want to highlight some problems, the good things, of course, and the things to be aware of before starting. And also, of course, why you will want to use your PSVR 2 to play PC VR games. So yeah, why would you do that? Well, the PSVR 2 is arguably the cheapest native OLED PC VR headset on the market right now. This boosts a pretty cool display with a resolution of 2000 by 2040 each eye OLED display running up to 120 Hz. All of this supported directly on PC as well. Unfortunately though, we have to mention that there are some functionality missing completely, like the HDR support is not there at all, the eye tracking support is non-present, even if the PSVR 2 actually has it, and using your sense controllers, you're not gonna get the super fancy haptics or adaptive triggers, but yeah, just the vibration over here. The perk though here is that we're still talking about a native PC VR headset. That means that the video will arrive directly from the display port without any encoding and decoding needed like it happens with the Quest 3 or the Quest 2 or all the other standalone headsets, for example. And that is not just better for quality because you don't get all those weird artifacts, but also in theory for performance. So yeah, at its price that is now 350 on offer, well, it becomes a very good package. So considering that in here we have inside-out tracking and the controllers already included. And of course, always the option to use it with PS5 in case. It's an actual hybrid. But hey, what do you need to make it work? There are actually two different options, actually. One is to use the official PlayStation VR 2 PC adapter, but this is pretty much impossible to find. Mine is gonna arrive soon. I hope. Just be aware that on top of the $60 adapter, you're actually gonna need a display port 1.4 cable because that's not included. And also, if your PC doesn't have it, or even if it has it, because I'm gonna talk about it a bit later, a Bluetooth 5.0 adapter. But if you're lucky enough to have a GPU with a virtual link connection, that connection that was made directly for VR headsets and then never actually use, well, rejoice because you can save some money. It's gonna work. My PC has a 4090 inside that doesn't have that connection, so I had to dust off my old PC with a 2080 Ti. I just plugged it in, installed the app, and uh, yeah, it worked. It's awesome. Bear in mind that this is not just the regular type C. You can't actually use it with different devices. I tried with the Rogue Ally, for example, but the USB didn't have enough power. And I tried with my laptop with the USB type C that it gets actually connected directly to the graphics card. So it was working with the Rift S, for example, but also there it wasn't good enough. So the PSVR 2 is actually very picky on what to use. And if you have the virtual link, you can save on the adapter. If not, well, the adapter will be available. But hey, let's go through the app and let's see how it works, shall we? You're gonna find it directly on the Steam store. It's gonna be called PlayStation VR 2 app. And once installed, it's gonna install directly also the drivers to actually recognize the PSVR 2 on the PC. The configuration here is pretty straightforward, but be aware that you're gonna need your Sense controllers. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to go through the first setup. And that's where things got a bit complicated because the connection between the Sense controllers 
years and my PC was very finicky and there are many reports online of people having the same issue. Because yeah, the Bluetooth is not that great over here. You're actually gonna have to pair them holding the PS button and the select button or the start button on the other controller and use the native Windows Bluetooth settings to actually get them connected. The problem is that even if they are recognized by Windows, sometimes they're not getting recognized by the PlayStation VR 2 app. So if you're interested in doing this, PlayStation actually suggests to take some uh, particular adapters to use that directly, also saying that the operation is actually not guaranteed. Thank you, Sony. I actually grabbed the TP-Link UB500. I'm actually gonna leave a list of the adapters right below so you can grab the one that you prefer. I, that one was the cheapest. So for now, while I was able to get through the setup, at least playing games with uh, the regular Bluetooth from my motherboard was actually pretty much impossible, as one of the two was getting disconnected all the time. I was getting some missed thumb presses and, uh, well, tracking was all over the place. But hey, it's actually okay, because the thing that I was the most curious about this thing is actually the OLED display, to use it with some simulators, like Elite Dangerous or Star Wars Squadrons. While the OLED display with the very deep blacks will, will give just the best possible scenario. I mean, horror games are good too. Half-Life Helix, there is not really a horror game, is actually a very good example to use because it has very dark areas that we have to go around with the torchlight. And uh, yeah, that can be completely terrifying and uh, an OLED display will be absolutely amazing for it. But I'm gonna report on it a bit later when I get actually the official adapters and the Bluetooth adapter that is for sure needed. So be ready for it. Also be ready for some through the lenses videos because now that we have native support, we can actually compare it with the actual games we always compare it to, to you know, make a good comparison with the Quest 3, maybe the Quest 2, the Quest Pro, the Pico 4, the Index. Let me know what you wanna see it compared to. Those are gonna be next week if I can prepare everything. But yeah, when the setup is done, you're gonna be able to actually create your Guardian system and you're gonna be able to use the pass-through cameras on it to actually see outside. It's actually pretty good that we have this function. Uh, not many PC VR headsets can actually do that directly on Steam VR. So you press the button and you see what's around you. Uh, it's great to grab a drink or just find your controllers in case they don't connect with the Bluetooth. But yeah, the Guardian setup there is very similar to the one that we have on the PS5. And once it's done, you're gonna find yourself directly in the Steam VR home. And that done, it's gonna work like a regular native PC VR headset. So you can browse around your home, you can select your games that you want to play, or pressing the PS button, you're gonna be able to open the Steam VR home overlay. Over there on the settings, you're gonna be able to switch from the 90 Hertz to the 120 Hertz mode. Unfortunately, there are just those two available. Change the resolution, of course, and there's gonna be a new button for a PSVR 2 companion app, and in there, you're gonna be able to change the brightness directly, change the vibration intensity of the controllers, show the safety notices, um, okay? Or go again to the play area setup to rearrange your Guardian system. But yeah, overall, it's a very solid implementation. Playing with it, it actually tried different simulators like Assetto Corsa, Elite Dangers, like Star Wars Squadrons, and those were all very good. Bear in mind though that the characteristics of the display were always gonna be the same. So we have the weird diffuser filter in front of the screen that's gonna make everything feels like a weird fabric. And so it's not gonna bring all the resolution that would you expect from that high resolution display that we have right now. The colors though really pop. There's no bending when it comes to different colors grading like usually happens when using link or virtual desktop because again, we're not using any decoding or encoding and everything runs actually pretty well. What I noticed though, that there's some uh, rubber bending effect if you move your head very, very fast. Probably all the display doesn't refresh fast enough and the Steam doesn't actually recognize it as a Steam VR headset directly uh, on the top right. Instead, you're gonna have to click directly on the Steam VR button to actually start it or on the PlayStation VR app. I actually suggest to go through Steam VR so you're not gonna need 
to have the controllers connected every time because that is going to be a requirement from the PlayStation VR 2 app. Instead, if you click on Steam VR, it's going to start even without the controllers. And that's very good. And hopefully Sony is going to fix it in the future. Hey, overall, is it actually worth it to use this thing just for PC VR? Well, the OLED displays are really particular. We still have Fresnel lenses over here. While the pancake lenses, the new generation lenses look much better in many cases, I'm gonna be able to show you more with the True Lenses videos because unfortunately it's not as clear as it should be, but that's also because of the diffuser in front. So yeah, PC VR with a PlayStation VR 2 is not gonna be a magic wand. It's not gonna solve all the problems of these headsets. Super sampling is just not enough to make everything look better because with this diffuser, we don't have screen door effect but also we lose some of the clarity. Just not my favorite, but it's a OLED, so, so close. But yeah, would I consider it instead of the Quest 3 or instead of the Quest Pro or Pimax Crystal and something like that? Well, that's probably a topic for another video. The Pimax Crystal will arrive soon and it's a higher resolution, but with different spherical lenses. The Quest 3, well, it's a standalone headset with also PC VR capabilities, so it gives you more possibility. But it's also true that this can connect with the PS5, so you can use it with a console if you have it and have your games also natively there. There are just some more things to talk about. But yeah, to be completely frank, the Quest 3 actually looks better even with the compression of the connection with Wi-Fi. And that's kind of weird. Overall though, I think the implementation from Sony here is pretty solid, considering that they didn't even use their official adapter to connect everything. Not that it changes anything anyway, because we're talking just about the video throughput, because the Bluetooth, for example, where there were problems, is not even included in that adapter, so. That's a thing. So yeah, as we said though, it's not a magic wand. It's not going to solve all the problems and the shortcomings of this headset. The lack of functions that made it special, like the eye tracking and the advanced haptics really leave a bitter taste. If it's older than what it should, it work, it does what they decided for it to do, but I don't think I would choose it over the Quest 3 or even the Pico 4 with new lenses and more detailed screens. I think there's fun to be at. The OLED is a nice novelty to go back to with those very deep blacks and the screens are very bright. The suns were crazy bright in on my eyes, even if it doesn't show very well over here. But yeah, if you have it already, why not? If you find it cheap, why not? But don't expect miracles. It's just not there. And notice for me, it's mind boggling that they are asking you to pay $60 for the adapter and that doesn't even include the DisplayPort cable or the Bluetooth adapter itself for the controllers. It's just like an half-baked solution, let's say. But overall, it's very easy to just double click on Steam VR and start your games and those games are gonna run without any problem like it's a native Steam VR headset because now, now it is. But remember that beside the adapter, you're gonna need a DisplayPort cable 1.4 and also the Bluetooth adapter for sure. Anyway guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any question, please let me know in the comments below. As always, again, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you're leaving our channel, join the button down there, little on further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons who join the channel, of course, and I see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.